together, serving education. softball just anywhere. It wasn't easy getting this softball field. There used to be a vacant lot here where we played softball. One day we went to play and... for a good softball game. It won't hurt you children to bicycle over to the high school field. But that's over two miles. I jog further than that every morning. By the time we bike there, we're pooped. Do it for a while and you won't be. You'll be better at softball, too. The high school field's always crowded, usually with big kids. This lot is in a strategic location for business expansion. And the mayor has promised the merchants of that area to encourage business. But there's plenty of parking around there. Not on Saturday mornings. But that's only one day out of the week. Yes, but one very important day to merchants. Let me explain something to you about government. Envision what can be, not what is. Ask not what parking we need today, but what we can need tomorrow. But we were there first. And we are building Dill City's future. Your children may be interested. This is Dill City in 20 years. All that? Think of the future. Here's your parking lot, and here, Dill City Stadium. Like for a big league team? That's the idea. In Dill City? <laughs> the stadium is a long-range plan. For now, the pressing need is for parking. Ah! Yes, Sarah? Mr. Cubitt of the Cubitt Asphalt Company is here to see you. Oh, thank you. Tell him I'll be right out. This is an important city project which I have personally sponsored. We are due to begin construction in only 10 days. You are only two children. But we're not. You're not children? There aren't only two of us. How many are there? Sometimes we can get nine on a team. Lots of people would rather have a softball field than a parking lot. How can we prove that to you? I suppose you could show me some statistics. Statistics? Explain it to them, Teddy. Numbers. Proof of municipal value. You can tell people something is true until you turn blue in the face. You can plead, you can scream, you can pull your hair out, but proving it is another matter. To prove something to other people, especially people who don't agree with you, it's important to come up with facts that are acceptable to your listener. Often these facts will try to present a big picture in numbers, because people tend to believe numbers. Those numbers are called statistics. The first question Richie and I asked ourselves was, how can we reach a lot of people quickly? The mayor wants numbers. Let's give her big ones. These 342 signatures seem a little sloppy. What do you mean? Where did you get them? At school. You mean parents bringing children? No, kids. Oh, all oh, kids. Almost all. There were seven teachers. Oh, seven adults. <laughs> That's almost every kid in our school. Over 99 out of every 100 were in favor for a softball field. How's that for statistics? Show them the map, Teddy. Certainly, Mayor. It is 
survey at all the shopping centers within a two mile radius of the mayor's new parking lot. And of those people who responded that do sometimes shop in our business district, over two thirds said they might shop more often if guaranteed adequate parking. Also, we took a poll of the merchants in that business district. Open the front page. see 93 percent responded yes they would like a parking lot in that area you just asked them if they wanted a parking lot right just you didn't ask them if they wanted a parking lot or a softball field we also didn't ask them if they wanted a rocket launching pad or a monumental sculpture or a nuclear power station a parking lot is clearly what is needed in that area as the merchants and shoppers overwhelmingly agree what if we can prove that more people want a softball field than a parking lot? I'm quite sure that's not the case, but... What if we can prove it with statistics? But, as I was saying, if you want to try and prove it, I suggest you start by asking all kinds of people all over the community. Not just your little friends. May I keep this? Certainly. Teddy can give you a copy of the map, too. Study them carefully. I think you'll find it's not worth your trouble to push your little campaign any further. Why don't we just go around and talk to everybody? There are probably 10,000 people who live within two miles of our lot. Then let's just talk to everybody who lives within a couple blocks. All of our friends do. If we do that, the mayor will say people come from farther away to shop. Mind if I interrupt? No. Go ahead. There's a technique you can use when you want to collect data to describe something about a big group of people, like how they feel about a softball field versus a parking lot. But you can't talk to everybody. Oh yeah? Like what? Well, it's called sampling. A sample is a small group that's taken out of a big group, but describes the big group. That sounds like what we need. Wait, wait a minute. Could you explain that a little more clearly? Well, the best way to start a sampling is to ask a few questions. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, the first is, who is your big group? You want to get that straight from the start. Why don't we just say the big group is everybody who lives within two miles of our lot? Like on the mayor's map. That sounds fair. I don't think the mayor would object to that. So, your big group will be all the people who live within two miles of the lot. Now, you're going to talk to some of those people. Enough people so that your sample group is like your big group. And your next question you want to ask is, is the sample group like your big group? If there are different kinds of people in your big group, those same kinds of people should be in your sample. Oh, that's why I ran into trouble just talking to the kids at school. Right, we should talk to people of all ages. And who live all around a circle. How should we reach people? My question precisely. How should you reach people? When you do a sample survey, there are many ways you can reach people. You can go to shopping centers, or you can phone or mail. You can even ask people to call a television station. You have to think about what way of reaching people works best for you and will give you a sample that's like your big group. Oh, excuse me, sir. We figured it would be the least trouble if we did our sample survey just like the mayor's by talking to people in shopping centers. The problem was... I'm yeah. doing a sample survey. Do you know the vacant lot on the corner of 13th and Main? The one across from Bushnell's Bakery? Yeah. Uh -huh. Would you rather the city turn it into a softball field or a parking lot? Um, parking lot. Thank you. the mayor. There are a lot of kinds of people in that two mile radius. And we only have six days to reach them. We got all our friends out hitting the pavements. We only had time to go to two houses on every block. More people than before did vote for a softball field, but just as many people voted for a parking lot. It was starting to look bad. Hello. Hello. I was wondering, ma'am, may I take a moment of your time? Well, certainly. And thank you for asking. I and my friends are doing the sample survey. Do you know the vacant lot on the corner of 13th and Main? Oh, yes. It's an eyesore. 
The mayor plans to build a parking lot there. Well, that's one way to clean it up. It's an ugly way. And we want a softball field. Which would you rather have? Are those my two choices? A parking lot or a softball field? Yes, ma'am. What's so sacred about them? Well, that's just what we're thinking about. Well, what about a park that people of all ages could enjoy? So the question we'll ask is, would you rather have a parking lot or a park with a softball field and a community center? Very good. Oh, but lots of people vote for a park. <laughs> but how could we reach people? How long did it take you and your friends to cover the whole circle before? Three days. <sighs> And we only have three days left before those bulldozers come in. We can't go to shopping centers, that's for sure. We can still go door to door. That's too slow. I can get my big sister and her friends to help. The guys are pooped. Mary and Jay got blisters from walking around. We can do it. Okay, but just make sure that you cover the whole circle, even if you only get one house on every block. How did you choose your houses? We picked the two closest to the center of the block. You didn't choose anyone that you knew, did you? Well, sometimes. Oh, we can't do that. We don't want the mayor to claim that we only chose our friends and not a sample group that's like all the people that live in that circle. What if we just go to the corner houses? Great idea. That'll be easier, too. I know. You get your friends. And my sister's friends. Right. And you go to all the corner houses on the blocks. I'll get my friends, and we'll let our fingers do the walking. Yeah! Well, Richie confessed that sometimes he did choose to go to houses of people he knew. When he did that, he ran into one of the worst problems that can happen during sampling. If you try so hard to prove something that you let it affect the way you reach people, you end up with a slanted sample that isn't like your big group and doesn't describe the big group. Luckily, the kids got the problem straightened out in time. We interviewed 340 people by going door to door, and we went to all the corner houses in the circle. 252 said they would rather have a park with a softball field and a community center than a parking lot. That's almost three-fourths. What does that mean, almost three-fourths? If three more people would have voted for a park, it would have been exactly three-fourths. But we wouldn't cheat one bit. Surely you don't expect us to change municipal plans based on your little survey. How many people did you survey? Well... 250. Oh! Well, we also did a telephone survey of 352 people, and over 8 out of 10 favored the park. Whom did you call, Miss Daly? Every old folks home in the city? We called the first name on every page in the telephone book. And that's a sample group that's a lot more like all of the people in our area than yours were. Herb, you're the president of the Chamber of Commerce. Would you please explain to these people the importance of parking to the local businesses? Well, it is important, folks. But, well, what happened, Mayor, is that some of the employees got calls. They got stopped in shopping centers. But, well, Pat, the fact is, they got talking about softball league and how great it would be to have a pretty place to lunch out in. Well, I think they're right. And I seem to recall a campaign promise to make Dill City a better place for citizens of all ages. Well, I have always felt that what this area needed was a good park. Have a night, Teddy. Yes, Mayor, you have. And we've been thinking a lot about putting a park on some of the other sites. Isn't that right, Teddy? Of course, Mayor Grimshaw. Perhaps we can put our dreams together. Yeah! So that's how we started out to save our vacant lot and ended up with a real softball field. It wasn't easy, but then I never minded a good fight. I was nice! You were too! I was nice! I was nice! for the 80s project and is supported in part by Exxon Education Foundation. This program was produced by John